Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this video tutorial, you guys are in for a real, real treat because we're going to be talking about a really advanced feature in Chassis Sim that's been in the background for a little while, but has was really used to really great effect very recently by um, uh, one of my customers in their recent victory in the Bathurst um, 12 hour. And what I'm going to be talking to you guys to, about today is using chassis sim to predict uh, to predict what your hot running tire pressures are from cold running tire pressures. Make no mistake, folks, this is something that is a very, very, very powerful feature of Chassis Sim. So, what we're going to be talking about is what you need to do to set up the model. Then we're going to talk about the process of actually going through and um, determining this. And then lastly, um, what we're going to show you is how you can use our track replay simulation feature to use this to maximum effect. So let's get started. First things first, let's talk about what you've got to do in terms of um, tire pressure, in terms of setting up the model. The first thing you do, most of you who are using the Fermu tire models in Chassis Sim will note that you set your tire pressure and you set your tire temp to what effectively is the warm running condition of the tire vis-a-vis -vis if your hot running tire pressure is say at 30 psi and your uh, running to, and your hot running tire pressure going down the start finish straight once you're up to temp is say 70 75 degrees c this is what you would enter in here the first step here is what we've got to do is that we set up the tire pressure and the tire temp of what we would be from a cold condition or if you're using tire warmers you basically enter that in as what your warmed um, condition from the tire temperature is the next step in the game is if you click on edit thermal properties you'll click here for internal temperature settings so here you click on deduce internal temp settings and what you've got here is a whole bunch of settings here that allows chassis sim to basically take the tire from a cold condition to a hot condition and the great thing about this is what it will also do is it will reflect on the surface temperature as well so if you're running ir temperatures measuring the surface temp you can also um, uh, dial this in as well the key things for the time being the hysteresis and internal temp multiplier we're going to talk about the determination of that in just a minute. Chassis Sim will handle that for you. What I do want to talk to you about is a couple of key things here. First of all, tire mass. You enter that in. This is the temperature of the tire carcass. So um, basically excluding the wheel and uh, excluding the wheel and the hub. So basically the, the actual temp the actual weight of the rubber. Obviously, you put in your tread width, and that is basically put in in meters. Your tread thickness, you put that in in millimeters. Your tire gas constant. Currently, I've got that set to what it should be for ni uh, uh, for nitrogen, and that is set in joules per kilogram Kelvin. Given that this is a relatively new uh, 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 new a area, I make no apologies whatsoever for um, uh, using strict SI uh, for strict SI units. All of you who have um, seen a lot of my chassis sim tutorials know very well my um, thoughts on the difference between imperial and SI, and this one do not even bother using imperial units it's a complete and utter wa it's a complete and utter waste of time if you've also got a tire that is basically really affected by temperature con uh, uh, temp uh, temperature conditions like if you're modeling a gas that is non-constant you put in basically um, the tire CV which is in joules per kilogram um, Kelvin now uh, now the great thing about the tire gas constant and the tire CV constant is that a lot of that is available from ready-made um, from ready-made gas properties that can be readily found on Google. So for whatever um, gas constant you are running, I would strongly recommend using Google as a resource. That being said, the defaults are set to nitrogen, and I would strongly recommend putting those in. Once that is done, we click on OK. We click on OK here. Click on OK to apply that. Now. Now is where thing. Now to quote Captain Jack Sparrow, this is where things get really, really interesting. So what we now do is that what we've done here is we've loaded an example supercar with some data. So we've got to load in our curvature file and we've got to load in our bump profile. And just to show you where I've done that, that's basically in here. So I've loaded in my curvature file and I've loaded in my bump uh, and I've uh, loaded in my and I've um, loaded in 
my uh, and upload it in my bump profile. So what we're now going to do is go to simulate tire force modeling. Go to tire force modeling advanced. You'll see here that I've got a um, parameter saying open loop sim click here to determine internal tire pressure uh, parameter. So I click on that. Before I do, what I want to make uh, make really really sure of is make sure that you've got your sign of your lateral acceleration right and the sign of your steering right. If you don't ho have uh, if you don't have those, you don't stand a prayer. So make sure you double check that. So I click on here to um, determine the open loop um, tire temperature parameter. So what I'm going to do here is to determine that internal tire temperature parameters, which was our hysteresis and reflector multiplier. I click on here. I'm going to click on the number of laps to warm up on. I'm going to click on the offset from the start finish straight. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in basically what my start pressure was. And, and now that is all set up in uh, view um, edit uh, in uh, the view menu where you can select um, uh, select units to use. And uh, so currently I've got my tire pressure set as PSI, my temps are set as degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put that in as 20. Going to put that in as 20. I'm going to put my target at say 28 PSI and uh, uh, 28 P uh, and uh, 28 PSI at the rear. I'm going to set it at 75 at the front. 75 at the rear. I make sure that I make sure that I've got my dampers and um, tire loads um, signed correctly um, set. Now I've only got one warm-up lap. Now I'm going to click on the monster file for that lap one. Now here's the big thing: for these monster files, they are exported. At, they are exactly the same format as the monster files you all know and love that you've been exporting at 50 hertz to determine things like your tire force parameters, your aero modeling, bump profiles, etc. Because we are doing a track replay. These monster files you're going to be using here are exported at 10 hertz. So I'll just click on here, and I'll click on my monster uh, uh, my monster file for my uh, for that particular lap, and that is exported at 10 hertz. Now the reason that's exported at 10 hertz is that for um, determining our internal temp parameters and running our open loop simulation, what we've just go what we've thrown here at 10 hertz is we've done this for two key reasons. Number one, so that we can get a really really wide range of laps, and currently we can go out to about a six lap uh, uh, to a six lap run. If some of you are using this and want this um, to go even further than that, by all means, um, get in contact with me. We can always uh, generate uh, uh, we can always um, uh, generate uh, that further for you, but um, the reason it's also a 10 hertz is to give you a very long run. So I'll click here to induce my internal temp parameters. I've clicked here to for the appropriate load. I'm going to click on OK. And to run this um, parameter, I'm going to click on 1 and I'm going to click on OK. So what, is, uh, so what this is now doing is it's now basically going through determining what the internal temp parameters. So at this point, you go off, get a coffee, Look at some other work um, that um, uh, you've got uh, uh, work that you've got to uh, what you, what you've got to do, and when it's done, you're going to have something that looks like this. Okay, so when we're done, what we're going to come back with is basically where we've actually wound up in in um, determining what our internal temp tire settings are. Now, to apply those, all you've got to do now is click on OK. And you're done. And to show you what it's actually applied, if we click on thermal properties, go to internal temp settings. This is basically the settings uh, that it's applied for the hysteresis multiplier and the internal temp multiplier. So now that we're done with that, now is the time that um, to quote uh, the Dark Knight, uh, to quote the Joker from the Dark Knight in uh, the uh, in the Batman trilogy. Now I'm going to show you a magic trick. So what we're going to do. So I'm going to go back to the simulate menu. I'm going to go back to tire force modeling and tire force modeling advanced. And now what I'm going to do is click on open loop settings. Click here to run the open loop simulation. And now what I'm going to do is click on a target data file. And I'll um, uh, overwrite um, this uh, particular file that I generated earlier. And I would just say um, um, track replay run, replay run. Now, Here's the thing. The great thing about it is, in addition to generating an ASCII, a tab delimited ASCII file that you can use in things like MATLAB, Excel to do post data analysis, if you click here, this will also export out laps that you can use in either Pi, Bosch, Motec, Morelli, it's a, a, a Morelli, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, but to do that, you go into simulate data logging options and um, you set that up. Now, 
Obviously, we're going to use the same um, 10 hertz monster file that we did before. I'm going to click on OK, click on 1 to run the open loop simulation, click on OK, and away we go. We've just done a uh, um, uh, we've just done a track. We've just done a track. Uh, uh, we've just done a track replay. So now that we've done uh, uh, so now that we've done that, we click on cancel, and this is where things get really, really, really interesting. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to open this up in Excel. And so, sorry, that was the wrong file. What I'm going to do now is open this up. Um, uh, we're, uh, open this up in Excel. Take two. Here is basically all our data for that run. It's a complete track replay that you can compare against actual data to see what you what you're doing. And indeed, if you're uh, if you're running a logger like Bosch, Morelli, Motec, um, uh, Pi Toolbox. You can readily uh, you can readily do this because the great thing about this is because it's a track replay, you can look at a whole bunch of variables that is either impossible that is either you can't log because of um, uh, technical regulations or it's very difficult to log such as role centers etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But let me show you the real meat of the, uh, let me show you the real meat of the conversation uh, the real meat here. The real meat here is take a look tire pressures. Pressure front left, pressure front right, pressure rear left, pressure rear right. Now I'm going to show you guys a real magic trick. Look at this. I am going to basically just highlight one of these columns. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a chart. So scatter chart, a line chart, click on next, go to finish. There you go, um, ladies and gentlemen. You now have a tire pressure plot. What this means is here was our cold condition, and this axis is in um, kilo, uh, this axis is in kilopascals. This is basically the number of samples that we've got, and you can quickly look here to see what your tire pressure was at the end of the run. Now, this was used. Um, by um, uh, one of my customers, Marinello Motorsport, in the Bathurst 12 hour to try and get a handle about basically what their tyre pressures are doing. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, this is a game changer in terms of what you can do and how you can drive the um, uh, how you can drive the simulation. And the, and where this was used was to really track tyre pressure growth to see what um, was going on between the fronts and the rear. So this is something that really opens up to a brave new world. Now, let me sort of throw in a few perspectives here, some, some warnings, some tips and tricks. First things first, when you are using, uh, uh, what I would strongly recommend is don't mix this with the lap time simulation. We've got some stuff under development right now that um, is going to be utilizing this. At present though, it's too immature to be released. So make sure that when you're using the lap time simulation, you reset these parameters back to the hot conditions and make sure that when you click on your thermal, uh, that when you um, click on your thermal properties and your internal tire temperatures for the lap time simulation, you turn that off. So that's the first thing that I want to say and I want to be really, really conscious of that. The second thing that I want to say, yes, this is a powerful tool. Do not under any, any, any circumstances, and I cannot re reiterate that again, any, any, any circumstances, try and use this as a fire and forget tool. F1 teams employ a mountain of engineers to get this right, to think that you're going to be able to do this straight off the bat. Quite frankly, if you, uh, uh, um, if you think that applies to you, then I would strongly recommend a career working for Disney World and Fantasyland. That being said, use this as a calculator. Indeed, this really sort of brings back to something I've always preached about simulation. Sometimes you'll play around with the parameters in simulation to get a representative result of what you want, and then you play a lot of what ifs. You're using this as a calculator. If you try and think you can use this as a magic wand, then I hate to say it, ladies and gentlemen, other uh, OPB, other pro uh, professions beckon. That being said, this is something that I now 
turn over to you to start playing with. Yes, it's not perfect, and anybody, and I'm not about to claim here that it is perfect. What I can say, though, is given the track record, uh, is that um, uh, given that um, uh, what um, uh, one of my customers found um, uh, w uh, with this. I can say that this is a useful tool. So look, don't take my word for it. For those of you who are in the Chassis Sim community, start having a play around. Uh, start having a play around with this. Um, if the results aren't quite right, you play around with um, the hysteresis multiplier and the internal temp multiplier. The hysteresis multiplier, you increase that to up the tire pressure or drop the tire pressure accordingly. The internal temp multiplier will get um, the temp uh, will get the surface temperature uh, up to temp. Throw some uh, um, uh, throw some mud on the wall. So this is uh, so if you're in a, so if you're already using chassis sim, give it a go. For those of you who aren't um, who aren't already using um, uh, chassis sim, this is actually this ships with chassis sim professional online. So it's there for you to use. Use it with caution, but throw some mud on the wall and really find out and uh, really find out for yourself what an effective tool this can be. And we'll catch you. In the next tutorial, in the next chassis sim video tutorial, or in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.